one of Margaret Anderson's contributions with the Little Review was to make Chicago not only relevant, but a leader as a literary city. Margaret Anderson was the driving force in making the Chicago Renaissance effective by risking jail time and financial ruin in order to publish unconventional work that otherwise might not have been circulated. The Chicago Literary Renaissance was a period of time from around 1912 to 1925. Many artists began resenting the increasingly material and industrial society and the lack of traditional values. Before Margaret Anderson, there were some artists in Chicago who were somewhat well-known, but for the most part, Chicago was disregarded as an art town. New York was the hub for art in the U.S. at the time. Margaret Caroline Anderson was born on November 24, 1886, in Indianapolis, Indiana. Margaret Anderson was rebellious and unordinary from a young age. Her family was part of the upper middle class in Indiana, and Margaret Anderson often resented her family's values. After reading a guidebook series entitled So You Think You're Going to Paris by Clara Laughlin, Anderson wrote a letter to Laughlin about how a perfectly nice but revolting girl could leave home. Laughlin responded to the letter by inviting Anderson to Chicago to talk with her. Upon arriving in Chicago, Anderson was immediately intrigued by the city and the way of life there. Margaret Anderson began reviewing books for Clara Laughlin, Herod by Stephen Phillips being the first book she reviewed. She was very good at reviewing books and eventually began working for the Chicago Evening Post, and the dial. The idea for the little review came to Margaret Anderson in a sleepless night, an event which she details in her autobiography. I had been curiously depressed all day. In the night, I wakened. First precise thought, I know I am depressed. Nothing inspired is going on. Second, I demand that life be inspired every moment. Third, the only way to guarantee this is to have inspired conversation every moment. Fourth, most people never get so far as conversation. They haven't the stamina, and there is no time. Fifth, if I had a magazine, I could spend my time filling it up with the best conversation the world has to offer. Sixth, marvelous idea, salvation. Seventh, decision to do it, deep sleep. In room 917 of the Fine Arts Building on Michigan Avenue in March 1914, the little review began. The journal got its name from the Little Theater, a new and innovative theater in Chicago. Although the outside was somewhat bland, the inside contained new and exciting work from artists such as Floyd Dell and Sherwood Anderson. Many of the artists whose work was published in the Little Review struggled to get their art published anywhere else. Her mission was to, in part, to create a forum in which people who were routinely unappreciated or rejected in the mainstream would have a voice and have a judge and a jury. A little review published written pieces and poems as well as drawings and photos. Artists like Ben Hecht, Ernest Hemingway, Gertrude Stein, Constantine Brancusi, Marcel Duchamp, and T.S. Eliot were all published in the Little Review. Because of the Little Review, authors like Anderson, Hemingway, Floyd Dell, T.S. Eliot, um, uh, Juna Barnes and others um, started to get attention and started to make themselves more viable uh, as authors who would publish in other places. An important aspect of the Little Review was its financial struggles. 
Anderson had to include many advertisements in the backs and the beginnings of her magazines. The cover of the May 1915 edition of The Little Review was colorless because of a lack of funds. In 1915, in the last seven pages of the journal, Anderson included some of the companies that refused a sponsorship and a list of reasons why they should support her. At one point in 1915, when she did not have enough money to stay in her current apartment, she moved her friends and family into tents along the shores of Lake Michigan from May to November. Margaret Anderson met Jane Heap in 1916. Heap became the co-publisher of The Little Review along with Margaret Anderson. Ezra Pound was a poet who became the foreign editor of The Little Review from London. The most famous aspect of the Little Review is that it was the first place that James Joyce's Ulysses was published from 1918 to 1920. In 1920, multiple copies of the Little Review containing Ulysses were deemed obscene and seized by the United States Postal Service and burned. Anderson and Heap were both fined $100, about $1,300 today, but Ulysses was eventually allowed to be published, and because of their determination, James Joyce's Ulysses is now one of the most famous novels of the 20th century. And James Joyce could not get published. Nobody would publish that book at the time, even in Europe. And, um, you know, four years later, it's in book form, and it becomes what some people believe is... Um, you know, one of the best novels in the English language. The October 1917 issue was suppressed as well by the post office because of Wyndham Lewis's Cantleman's Spring Mate. In 1923, Anderson and Heap moved to France with the Little Review. In 1925, Margaret Anderson gave the Little Review to Jane Heap, who continued it until 1929. Margaret Anderson died in 1973 in Le Canet, France. Many small presses in Chicago have built off what the Little Review and the artists it's published created, and the Little Review and the artists it published helped make Chicago one of the most important art towns in the Midwest. Anderson was also a lesbian and stood up for her rights at a time when that type of love was not very common or accepted. Margaret Anderson broke many barriers during her time publishing The Little Review. She was an upper-middle-class, young Midwestern woman. In the early 20th century, people like her didn't generally create avant-garde and unconventional journals that published work that was often considered obscene by the public. The subtitle of The Little Review, Making No Compromises with Public Taste, shows Anderson's conviction in creating something that she believed would be impactful and important, and the fact that she wouldn't be influenced by other forces. Margaret Anderson believed that no one should be prevented from sharing their art with the world. Her journal was censored by the post office and had many copies of her journal burned or confiscated, and even risked jail time in order to publish the Little Review in the way she believed it should be. The Little Review gave artists who were important contributors to the Chicago Renaissance a place to publish art which no other publishing companies would print. She gave many artists a chance to publish their work that they may not have been able to without the Little Review.